Have you ever wondered and considered your personal definition of success? This is the question that this Taurus new moon is really inviting us to reflect on, to look at, to examine, and there's a lot of strong energy to support that. So today, as we go through this video, I want to walk you through what is being presented in the new moon and the Taurus new moon, and maybe some questions for you to consider as you reflect on what it is that you want to set as new intentions for this Taurus part of your nature. Hi, my name is Tamara Bartmus. I am an astrologer, energy worker, and natural wellness educator. And today, today I want to wear, share with you more about this Taurus new moon. So let's jump in. I'm trying to record this all in one. I don't want to go edit things. Call me lazy. Call me efficient. But I really want to um, get you this information today. Um, it has been, it has been a crazy month and there's been a lot of learning going on. I hope you've been feeling it. If we look at this Taurus new moon, um, I live in Utah. And so this is set to where I live. And of course it might look different depending on where you live, but this process of the new moon is really to give us an opportunity to integrate the external and internal parts of us. That's the sun and the moon coming together and that's creating that new moon experience. But this particular new moon, we see we have a lot of Taurus, Taurus energy going on. Taurus, Taurus, whichever you prefer. Um, we have Venus here in Taurus at 10 degrees. We have, of course, the sun and the moon at 18 degrees, two minutes. And then we have Uranus and Jupiter here at 22 and 25 degrees. And so there is a compressed energy, a conjunctive energy that everything is sort of you know, squeezing through together to help us understand what it is we value, how do we define success, and how do we, what is it that um, is a value within us, not just the external things, but the internal things. Um, so first off, to to go over this, I utilize um, some work worksheets that I've created that I'm working on getting published to Amazon. And when they get available, you will be able to walk through these kinds of journeys with me in your workbook um, to sort of personalize these new moon and full moon experiences, because it is not just, oh, the sun and moon are in Taurus, but what does that mean for you in your own birth chart? That's what these workbooks help you walk through to see what it's hitting on your natal chart and how that can really personalize the energy of the opportunity to see change and choose. And that is, that is something that is coming for you. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments, because I really value what astrology brings, not just for the like awareness factor, but also for the personal transformation that we can choose differently. If life is presenting to us certain, certain circumstances, it is our opportunity to use our power to choose to change what we think and change how we show up in our lives. And of course, all the signs of the Zodiac are part of everybody. And so are all the planets. And so nobody gets untouched in these new moons or full moons or these transits. It all influences all, all of us, sometimes a little bit more intensely than others. And so if you are a fixed sign, if you are a Taurus, a um, Leo, a Scorpio, or an Aquarius, this of course is going to have an impact on you because it's hitting those um, those signs at a square or a, a tension dynamic. Um, if you are an earth sign, this might not be as difficult um, in some ways and more difficult in others. So just be aware of that. That, that would be you know, everybody has their sun is one aspect of this very complex and beautiful um, thing we call astrology. And so don't think, oh, I'm fine. Or, oh, I don't need to, you know, like consider this, this could actually be very transformative for you. So as we dive into this at 18 degrees, um, the sun and the moon here in Taurus are really presenting us the opportunity to examine what is it that we feel is valuable about ourselves and what do we feel is valuable about the world that we've created around us. Look at this new moon. There is not just the sun and moon in Taurus alone that is influencing our examination of our values, but Uranus and 
um, Jupiter have a lot to say about this, as well as Venus as it makes its path through Taurus. So to start off, I want to talk a tiny bit about Uranus or Uranus or Uranus, whatever you want to say. It is a unique planet in that it helps break up things that have become crystallized within ourself. And as the sun continues to approach and get closer to um, this point, in fact, it will hit Uranus on the on May 13th as a conjunction, and then it will hit Jupiter just about five days after that on May 18th. So as the sun, and of course the moon, but maybe more importantly, the sun moves and hits these points, it really is sort of this reintegration of identifying who we are and what we value, what is important to us and um, how we're going to live that out and express that. That's what the sun helps us do. And Uranus is like the planet that is like taking apart things. It is exposing things that don't resonate anymore with who we are and where we have to, again, like choose how we're going to respond to these surprising events that make us um, sometimes uncomfortable with what is showing up in our life and where we really have to say, okay, is this really what I want? When it comes to their placement and this process that's happening in the sign of Taurus, it really is that invitation to say, is this really who I am? Am I really expressing myself here? Or am I expressing what was projected onto me or how I was conditioned in the environment I grew up in? Am I being honest with myself about who I am? And so these external events present that question to us and that conflict, and then we get to choose how to show up that way. Um, we have with, let me look at my notes. When we think about Jupiter in Taurus, it is more about, hey, there's a lot of opportunities. And that could be like surprising opportunities out of the blue that you haven't ever thought of or been given to you. But again, sometimes we think that our success is defined outside of us by what we achieve and accomplish. And yet when we reach, we achieve those things, we are felt, we are left feeling empty. And so the opportunity is to, to consider maybe success really isn't what I acquire and my bank account or my accolades or how people think of me. Maybe success is actually something more internal and it's how I live true to my values. It's how I choose to, what I choose to give my time, energy, and money to, and how I find serenity and how I create peace in my life. And so it could go either way. Everybody's at different stages of growth. I would say for people who are in the um, Uranus opposition moment right now, that would be like 40, 42 to 45, you're going to see that energy actually present a lot of reflection for you because you're at your half point of your Uranus, you know, um, processing through the 84 years that it goes to get back to where it started on your birth. And that again, presents its own kind of awareness and midlife, what some people call crisis. And just, am I really doing what resonates with me or am I doing this to please somebody else? And that is a question that only you can answer. So as, and I'm going to move this chart through just so you can see it a little bit forward, a little bit more. Um, let me flip, flip this around. But as we move forward, you can see, if you just keep your eyes right here on the movement of these planets, um, as we keep going forward, you'll see the sun hit and pass Uranus. It will, you'll see it hit and pass Jupiter. And then Venus is starting to come along. And as Venus moves across those same planets, it's almost this extra integration of, again, what it is we desire and value. And then we have Mercury coming up and helping us um, integrate not just our heart, but our mind and what we value. Okay, so the, Venus would be more of the desires of our heart. And we'll say Mercury is the thoughts of our mind. And then as those as Mercury moves past Uranus and per moves past Jupiter, you're going to also see Mars that is now just moving through Taurus is the activator energy that's coming in behind. And this puts us into June and into July, as you see, as it moves forward. Um, 
it helps us actually shift and do the things that are aligned to our values. So I'm putting, his see here, here we go. Mars just passed Uranus on July 15th. And then it's going to, as you, you know, Jupiter has shifted now into Gemini um, and we, it will move across Gemini um, what's it, August 16th. So today's new moon actually is this great invitation to really examine what we value because there is a significant integration of our values with how we're going to be thinking, how we're going to be acting, what we're going to be really honoring. And our heart is a powerful magnet for the things that we create in our lives. And so if you take the time during this full, sorry, during this new moon to evaluate what it is that you truly want to be expressed. What do you want to put your time, energy, and resources into? And is it aligned to your values or is it aligned to what somebody told you to value or what the world or society says is of most importance, yet it's really not? You're feeling empty from it. That is, this is the moment to, to really align to your true self instead of aligning to what others project or expect of you. And that is a courageous and challenging thing to do. But the beautiful opportunity of a new moon is that it sets the intention. And as the energy moves through it for the next 12 months, it will support you in this, this aspect of your development, of your personality, of yourself, of, and, and the lessons that you can learn about who you are and what you value and how you're going to create that, a reflection of that in your life experience. Um, some of the things that I recommend for people during this new moon, because it's so earthy, is pay attention to your senses. Things that you hear, things that you smell, things that you taste, things that you touch. Um, all of these senses are triggered, especially by this Taurus energy. So be still don't necessarily go buy more things that's sort of like this um not always the greatest reflection of the Taurus energy it's more like take care of what you have simplify your life take a take, go find your sanctuary spots your quiet spaces go go into silence um give yourself some time to really reflect and connect with your in your instincts with your 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 gut knowing of what it is who you are and what it is you want to create in your life i hope that helps you just a couple of the other things before we wrap this up um, I have found that essential oils are one of my favorite ways to support me through this energetic transitions and new moons and full moons are potent portals of that. There's transitions happening all the time, but these, the, the new moons and the full moons really reflect our, our conscious self and our, uh, and our subconscious self. Um, so the two oils that came up today for this particular experience that we're moving through is the oil of Northern escape, which is a blend um, it's called the Woodland Blend, and it is especially helpful to people that are wanting to avoid the transitory, <laughs> the transits. Um, they they basically are like, this is too hard. I just don't want to deal with it. And they try to like run away. It is so much better for your life if you just stay the course. And this, this, this combination of trees, it has in it um, black spruce, Siberian fir, balsam fir, lavender cedarwood, cypress, frankincense, hinoki, nuka, kanaga, and clove. So many powerful oils to support you through, through the transition. Don't go around it. Don't go under it. Don't go over it. Just like move through this transition, um, helping you to reevaluate again, the things that you are accomplishing or focusing on in your life. Is that truly aligned to the things that you want? Um, helping you to determine what truly matters to you, what you truly value, and help you to make sense of that in ex, you know in comparison to what the world presents. Um, it also is helpful to again clarify what is being imposed on me, what was I conditioned to think was important versus what do I truly feel is important. Um, and I would encourage you to look at where your Venus is placed on your personal birth chart because your Venus gives you an idea of where to return to set, find that sense of self again, that those things that help you feel calm and serene and connected to your instincts. Um, so pay attention to your Venus placement for that purpose to support you through this new moon. Um, but also because the new moon is in, because Venus is in Taurus during this new moon, 
you can't really go wrong with things that can bring you connected to nature and um, ground you in the senses of that of that experience. The other oil that's coming up, which I find is really interesting, uh, is jasmine essential oil. Now, jasmine is often associated with healing of of sexual trauma of places that, and I, as I pondered on this, I thought, oh, this is so so interesting. I don't know who this is for, but for people that have been traumatized by in in a variety of ways, but it could be even sexual trauma that have been led to believe that their value is their body or their value is what they how they portray their body or or what they look like is what makes them valuable. Um, that there is a realignment, a healing that needs to occur to see themselves. Yes, their body is beautiful or important, but not necessarily their identity or their core value or their core worth. Um, it's helping to reconnect to your pleasure centers. So if you've been traumatized and turned off to your ability to sense things and feel things and be connected to your sensualities, um, this can help restore that, heal that as you work through that 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 opportunity of growth, um, really connecting again to your passions and to things that are truly aligned to your your idea of who you are and what your worth is and how that's separate from necessarily the things that you accumulate, the things that you build, the way you look, um, and how others perceive you. So that that process is all that we're experiencing through this new moon. So again, the two oils, I'll link them in the description below, Jasmine and Northern Escape. I would really encourage you to take some time. And I am sorry that I didn't have this ready and published that you could get for yourself the Taurus um, new moon workbook. But let me show you what it looks like so that you can anticipate that next month, which I should have available on the Gemini for Gemini month. Um, this is just a part of the workbook. It's This is, um, again, your opportunity to work through, you post the new moon chart, um, you work through what does it look like in the sky right now? What does it look like on my birth chart? And we walk you through that process of setting new intentions for the next season of growth. And this is just, again, a very small part of that workbook, but I think it's helpful uh, to keep record. I think the stars have a lot to teach us about parts of ourselves that can inform us of our identity as, as I call it, children of God. And so I utilize the transits of this guy to help me be more connected to my identity as a as a child of God and what that means as far as my potential and my opportunities for growth and my uniqueness in how I show up and contribute to humanity. So I hope that you look forward to that coming in Gemini season. But in the moment right now, take some time to take some time to reflect on. Let me give you the questions that I would that I would encourage you to ask yourself for this for this new moon. I was working on it myself. What have you learned? in the last 12 months about your sense of self, your values, what matters most to you, um, your tendency to be stubborn or to be um, fixed and not willing to change, okay? Um, what have you learned about your relationship with money, your relationship with your body and those kinds of conversations, all right? What is showing up for you right now during this Taurus season? We have what? a week and a half-ish more of Taurus season. So it's not over yet, um, but we do have some more time. And the the experiences of this season can really be teachers to what you're needing to learn. And then um, as you consider the next 12 months, a new moon in, invites this resetting and re um, setting of new intentions about what we want to change and how we want to grow. So what are the things that you want to change and how do you want to grow when it comes to your personal Taurus nature, um, your relationship with your values, your relationship with your body, your relationship with your senses, your relationship with money, with food, with nature, all those kinds of things present that question. And then is there something that you feel inspired in what you need to take action to be able to move forward in that intention and then start that process? So I hope that this is insightful and helpful and makes you consider. I, I don't, I, I'm more of like, let's present the questions and you get a, 
provide the answers because you live in your day-to-day -day experience. You are, you are you, and you know yourself more than I would ever know yourself. So hopefully this just gives you the reminder to set aside some time to be introspective, to open up your mind to awareness and the lessons that are being presented for you to learn from and to take action on. And I'll see you guys later. Thanks for joining me.